Hello. Uh, so what I'm going to do right now is try to show you how to assemble this uh, um, 3D printed Esra here guy. And I'm going to start off with this pile of parts and start organizing them into their functional units. And we'll put this guy together. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is work on the eyebrow pieces and uh, we'll just build from there. So let me get things kind of arranged, get some hardware, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna assemble is the eyebrow mechanism. And the only thing you have to do uh, that takes a little extra time and effort is you have to get a servo horn and drill it and then tap it with a 440 tap. Or do what I do is I tend to just use a um, self-cutting 440 screw that you can use to go ahead and tap. It's also it works out handily in the event that you need to actually tap in one of these holes and they, they don't work uh, out of the box, so to speak. But we start off by just putting the servo in here. I'm not going to worry about the exact placement of this horn or the setting of the screw yet um, because there's a good chance that I might have to do some final alignment on it. Uh, when it's actually assembled and I'm uh, going to try to get it running and I'm just using the uh, the screws that came with the servos and cutting it directly into the plastic. Uh, the way I've set it up I generally don't have to tap uh, any of the holes. Uh, the PLA is fairly soft and generally with just a gentle push I can kind of get the screw to sort of start threading. These have to slide, so you don't want to get them tight. Everything I'm doing right now is going to be with a quarter inch 440. So let me finish this quickly. And I've got these aligned. Okay. And then this piece here is going to be the pivot. Again, keep in mind nothing gets tightened. This all has to move. It's a bit awkward. Maybe I'll pause it and put this finish putting this together and then show you exactly what it looks like. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, here you can see it fully assembled. All right, everything is loose enough that it can move. And of course, as that servo goes up, it'll then be able to furrow the brows or to place it down. Okay, so we're gonna set this guy aside and work on the next piece. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is assemble the main servo frame, okay, the main frame of the system. And it's basically gonna be these three pieces here. Okay, the base, the adapter plate, and then the mainframe itself. Ultimately what happens is this piece slides on here and bolts in from the bottom. And this will all bolt on top of here like so. So I'll get this started again. I'm using, since these are recessed, they don't need to be very long. I'm just going to go ahead and use one quarter inch 440s. And quickly put those in there. Again, I'm, I don't want to, I didn't tap these, they're just going straight into somewhat soft PLA, so I don't want to over tighten it. There's really no reason it doesn't bear that much load. And then this is going to go in here like so. And once again, to save time, why don't I pause it while I tighten these four in, because this one, these are a little tough because you can't turn the wrench at full turn. So I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, one important point, as you can see, I have it assembled now, all right, and I started off incorrectly, so if you guys have already built it, maybe you figured it out, or uh, maybe you waited for me to build it first, but these have to be longer screws on this side, so I used one half inch 440 screws on this side, and then quarter inch 440 screws on this side. So now I'm going to get my servos ready for installation and I'll see you back in a second. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to mount the servo that's going to be able to open and close the jaw. 
this one, okay, orient yourself here with the uh, the mainframe. This servo, the servo horn goes closest to the top and it comes through this side. You don't have to push the servo through. All right, it should just sit like this. And then you're going to use four of these quarter inch 440s to attach it like so. And once again, as usual, I'll pause it while I screw this thing together. And I'll see you in a second. All right, so I've got this servo attached. All right, you can see it's through the back side. It doesn't protrude. And then the horn is at the top. Next, what we want to do is we want to attach the lower jaw. And that's going to require these pieces here, the spacer, and two 5 8 inch uh, 440 screws. And what ends up happening is we want to have one go all the way through. Then we go through the body here. And then this will then screw into the other side, which has a smaller hole. So it should bite. I'm going to get it loosely started. And then this, let me see if I can get this so you can see it better. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, start to screw through, then put in the spacer, and then it gets screwed into the hole on the other side of the jaw like so. And then this gets tightened down firmly like so. And this you want to have tightened enough that it's held, but obviously the jaw is going to have to be able to move up and down like so. So you don't want to get it excessively tight so that it binds. All right, and there we go. And I will pause this again while I get the next set ready. All right, so next is just the placement of the servo that's going to raise and lower the eyes. And it literally just sits on here like this. You might have to do a little bit of a wiggle to get this to sit in here. And then a gentle twist. I barely had enough room to kind of get that to fit. And you won't see there's, or you will see that you don't actually use four screws, there's only three. And then go ahead and tighten it up. So once again, I'll see you in a second. All right, next you want to go ahead and uh, install the center mouth uh, servo support. And to that, what I end up using is two uh, three eighths inch screws. I think that um, uh, there's going to be a lot of torque on this particular piece. And it is not uh, very convenient. You have to kind of set this in here like this. And this is going to line up on these two holes. And once again, getting the wrench in here is um, not generally a fun experience. But it will fit, and you will be able to get it in there. So I'm going to pause this and screw these in. All right, the servo that actually makes the robot smile, that controls the lips, uh, that one takes a little bit of sort of special attention and pre-planning. So you're going to use your servo. What you want to do is I've drilled and tapped two holes on opposing sides. Okay, so these are already tapped 440. And so I'll be able to easily screw a screw straight into them. You want to put these into your servo and then slowly turn your servo as far as it can uh, clockwise. Then what you have to do is you want to get these things kind of lined up in such a way that if the two rods are parallel with each other, they don't crash. So you want to, I think I'm going to have to sort of just place that in there. So here you can see that if I screw these in and hold them parallel, that they don't crash. Whereas if I went further, let's say I went all the way to, for example, here, then they would crash into each other. All right, It would twist. It would torque. So we want to get them so that they remain parallel and not touching. So something along the lines of like this. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and put these screw in very quickly. And let me set this up and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So here they are, they're attached. You can see they're still very loose so they can move. But what's important 
is it's rotated as far as it'll go clockwise. And these guys are not, when they're remaining parallel, do not actually bump into each other. So that way, when it rotates, you'll be able to get a maximum amount of extension and a very significant amount of contraction. Okay, so hopefully that was kind of clear. And of course, this assembly, ultimately, you have to kind of weave it in there. This wire fits in here. Give it a twist, and then you can attach it with more of those um, quarter-inch 440 screws. All right, next we're going to start working on the eyes. In this case, what you want to do is, before you really do anything else, is you want to get these guys started because it's once the uh, eyes are kind of in place, it's really hard to get these screws started when they're able to wobble around. These are going to be the center pivots that allow the eyes to work left and right. So we're just going to use them as axes. I'm just bringing them in to the point where they're flush on the inside. So I'm not bringing them all the way through because I'll be doing that adjustment at the end. What you ultimately need next is a one half inch screw. And this is going to be placed, let's see if I can get you a good camera angle. This is going to have to go like, let's see if I told that, like this. Okay, so it's going to pivot on this point right here, and you got to come in here with this wrench on an awkward angle and be able to insert it in the side. So I'm going to do that, and I'll join you in a second. Okay, so I've got this guy attached. Again, it uh, should be able to rotate with little resistance. And then you want to take these uh, eyeball supports here, and... Start by actually pushing in the eyes, whatever it is you're going to be using, until they're nice and flush, like so. All right, and these guys get placed in here, and you slowly bring these screws in and drive them into the pivots. This has to be done with some care. You don't want to uh, cause it to sort of jam, so work on it slowly and carefully. And of course, when it's done, the eye should be able to pivot. All right, so the eyes are working and they're, they can pivot. The next thing then is to attach the linkage to the eyes. This has to go with the open gap facing the back, okay? So it's going to go in here like this. And I would use two 3 8 inch 440 screws to attach this. All right, so now that that's attached, what you want to do is you want to take the, one of the small servos. This is a tight fit. <clears throat> you kind of have to bend the wire up a bit and work it down. And then you're going to use two of the standard screws that come with it to screw this into the back of the uh, iframe. Then the servo horn gets placed in such a way that um, it fits into the slot. And that way, as the servo turns left to right, it pushes this lever, which makes the eyes rotate. And I would go ahead and set in. Actually, it looks like I'm not quite center. I would um, go ahead now and put in the small screw. And whoops, we'll see in a second. All right, it's time to start building the uh, upper lip. And in this case, I like to use 3 8 inch screws and a small washer. Ultimately, what's going to happen is these two pieces here get attached like so, okay, from the back side. So I'm going to take this screw right here, put it through the large hole, and then this is going to get screwed in like this, okay? So let me go ahead and attach these, and I'll show you. I can see I'm going to have to shoot another uh, video because I only have 15 minutes on these things, but ultimately this is going to get attached on here like this. And then from the back side, I'm going to bring these screws in and attach them to the holes on the back of the lip. And I'll assemble that, and then you're going to see that assembled in the next video, and I'll see you all in a second.